Welcome to Let's Analyze Control, episode 38. We're headed over towards the turntable. I really like this little hallway, so let's discuss it. The first thing I really like is the approach. This double staircase has a lot of really nice power to it. The way that it's not a straight shot from the top to the bottom, but it instead splits. And there's a couple of little uh, places to sit in the middle here and up there off to the sides. This approach not only looks good, but it also offers a lot of combat complexity because uh, you can only sort of half see the enemies coming down at you. Uh, and in fact, when you do fight in this area, the enemies do tend to congregate in these little corner areas up here just due to the way that their pathfinding works. And I thought that was a lot of fun. You can see that it looks equally good from the top. We've got these inverted ramps uh, to mirror the stair, and I think that works really well to kind of create the right sort of flow. Got to pay attention to the ceiling, at least a little bit. Here we've got the hallway itself. This has a standard asymmetrical light drop, like we always discuss. This one has an excuse, though. It's got these mail tubes coming out of the light drops, which I think is a really nice way to incorporate a device into the, uh, the geometry of your level. However, this hallway is a lot more complicated than our normal hallways because it's actually three hallways. The tall central hallway and the shorter side hallways. These side hallways remain largely unlit to focus your attention on the central hallway. But when you're fighting, there are definitely guys back here. And also, it's just there to focus your attention, as always, in a specific order. So the first thing we notice is the hallway, then we notice that red room at the end. Then we start to notice all of the other things in the area. Now, because we can't actually go through down into that red area from here, we will get plenty of chances to look around, poke around, catch up on the side content that we may not have immediately noticed. I think that's a really good design philosophy, and uh, I definitely recommend it. Down here we've got a control room, which is wonderfully dark. Um, and that's fine, because it's just a small cul-de-sac. We don't have to see where we're going. But we can sort of crane our necks and see that there's definitely some stuff down there. Um, it's it's interesting that you can actually see more from this side corridor, but in both cases the idea is the same. There's definitely some dudes in there. However, the webbing on this glass means that it's bulletproof even to magic guns. Over here we've got a side room, which is very brightly lit, and I think this is a wonderful change of place. Change of pace. <laughs> there were some really nice uh, pieces of loot in here, so, um, you know, a nice side tactic. And over here we've got the way forward, which is an elevator. Uh, having an elevator as the way forward is always uh, a decent idea, simply because you know that it's the way forward. You're going to be like, okay, well, if I press that button, I'm going to be leaving the area, so I better check the rest of the area first. There are plenty of times when a developer will, a level designer, will create a forward point, you know, a place where you move forward and leave everything else behind, but the player might not be sure that it's, you know, it's actually the forward direction. They're trying to explore everything and then they accidentally get shunted into the next area. Happens a lot. But nobody accidentally takes an elevator. Nobody, nobody walks up- Oh! It actually scared me. Nobody walks into an elevator and says, uh, you know, I'm definitely exploring the same level. Dylan and I were both prime candidates. Experiments. Um, no, you weren't an experiment. What are you talking about? Dylan, I guess you can argue he was an experiment, but you weren't. Anyway, we've got some dudes to fight down here. Might as well get to it. Doesn't seem to be a regenerator, so we can just uh, have a nice time beating people up without worrying about it at all. The enemies in this level are still labeled four, but they're ex they're, they're much much more durable than the other um, enemies we fought labeled four. Something about this area, they seem to take less damage, and uh, that makes the the fights a little bit more challenging than you would think, given the same you know given that they're the same 
um, quantity of enemies that you might fight elsewhere. So I wanted to take a couple of seconds and talk about how the damaged rooms look in comparison to the fixed rooms. Because if you've got a room with two states, you want to make sure that both states look amazing and look the right way to the player. Oh, it's also worth noting this is a little cute little setup here where we've got the ramp and the staircase. This isn't for um, wheelchairs, it's for it's for uh, forklifts, but the same idea applies. It's, it's good to have this kind of access thinking when you're creating your levels because it adds a lot of nuance. It adds the, the ability for the player to say, oh yeah, this is actually a wider world with a lot more concerns than just dudes to shoot. But back to what I was saying. You want these rooms to look good in both versions, right? So this room is an atrium and it's got this slice right down the middle. And what they've done for almost all of their uh, red rooms, almost all of their um, infected rooms, is they turn them into a single wedge. And the way they, the reason they do that is because it's easier for them to animate it when you fix it, but the result is always quite nice because every single one of these red rooms kind of reminds you of a knife. It's got just this really, really horizontal feel to it that, that really works well. Um, and it's possible that there might be some things that you can poke around into and the room is damaged like this, but generally speaking, they're pretty careful to lock everything else off and force you to uh, claim the room to see what else is here. Here you can see that they're just pulling in the walls so that the uh, the room is no longer quite so narrow, but it's still a very narrow atrium. Uh, and there we have it. There's the way forward, which we're not going to take. No, definitely not. Um, of course we are. Shut up. <laughs> it started there, and it's never gone away. So this room in particular, I have a soft spot for. One of the things I like about it is that this area over here, which we couldn't get to when the room was red, when they cleared it up, the barrier that we might have been trying to get past, this thing here, is no longer that wide, and we can just, you know, get past it. But there's also a lot of things like over here, you can see there is some kind of office uh, that we can't quite get in, but we can see there's treasure in there. I always love it when there's stuff like that. You get a feeling that the rest of the level is still around, you just can't reach it. And what do you think is beyond here? You think maybe it's where they were holding Dylan Faden? Looks like the same kind of door. I bet if we went back to that Dylan Faden room, we'd find that it's all cleared up now. But we're not going to. Can we grab it? Grab it! <sighs> Look at how high up we are. Uh, verticality is always fun, and I am a huge proponent of it. I just finished playing Paradise Killers. What a fantastic game. And that has some really, really nice verticality in it. Um, but this is no slouch either. This is really quite good. Uh, you can see on the far side there is very obviously some kind of upper walkway that we're probably going to have access to. But the room itself is organized in a really fun way. This atrium is super narrow and super tall. Uh, less less uh, narrow than it was a minute ago, but still very narrow. And the way they achieve that narrowness is to come in in segments rather than all at once. So you can see that they've got this step in. And then they've got this brilliant light all across the middle in one sharp knife-like edge that keeps the entire room lit while also pointing out that it's even narrower than you might have expected. Everything in this room is uh, uh, really, really sharp. I, l I like how it's designed. I, liked how, I like how it feels. Um, the only downside of this room is that it's not very interactive. Uh, although we've talked a lot about going up and looking at things, that's um, this is mostly observation, right? We can see there's stuff up here, but we can't get up there. Most atriums in this game have a second or third floor that you can actually access and interact with, but not this one. This one has a lot of areas you can look at, but you can't really go anywhere that's not on the first floor. Here we can see uh, clearance level 6, which means we're going someplace that we've been before, or uh, someplace that they didn't want us to get to before. And unfortunately for us, it's full of crap. We could go through. I think I know what's on the other side there. Um, but there's not really any point, because we've already been there. At least if it is what I think it is. Um, so even with that, the the interaction, the interactivity in this atrium is pretty low. We can't even go through the only door we could open. 
That's fine, though, because the point is to fight some dudes and then move on. It's a very beautiful arena to fight in, for sure. I really like these, these heavy tracks with the things discarded on them. I think this works really well. Um, previously, I talked a little bit about how I liked small tracks, because if you do small tracks, then they're human scale, and you can move across them and interact with them. Well, the way they continue to do their small tracks is that they use two tracks per wheel, so they've still got small tracks, but they can put huge devices on them, uh, and I think it looks great. Here's the turntable, which might look familiar. You can see there are some, uh, some baddies in here, both of the kind that we fight and the kind that we run from. And I've been going for, oh, ten minutes, so now's a good time to stop. Well, once I finish the immediate danger off here. Oh, you're a floating guy. I thought you were a... Ugh, I, I died. Oh well, it's fine. I'll live through it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in a second. 